Have you ever accidentally mistyped the name of a website in your internet browser's address bar and went to the wrong website? Say you're trying to go to google.com and you accidentally type in three letter O's rather than the two, or maybe you go to facebook.com and you miss one, you go to facebook.com. A lot of these domain names are often bought and used by threat actors, adversaries, hackers, or scammers, folks with ill intent to maybe host a credential harvesting website, to potentially steal your username and password password, do some phishing, social engineering, or deploy malware. So what if we could get ahead of it? Maybe get an idea for what these typo squatting domains or lookalike domains are, and maybe we could track them down and just know what's out there. So in this video, I wanted to show you DNS Twist. Credit where credit is due. This is by the GitHub user Elsief. Uh, hey, Marcin, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, my friend, but goodness, this is a fantastic and very cool tool. It's all about domain name permutation for detecting homograph phishing attacks, typo squatting, and brand impersonation. And it is a utility you can download and install, run on the command line. It's just a simple Python script where you can find those lookalike domains where adversaries might try to attack you. Also pretty cool as an additional source of threat intelligence, and it does DNS fuzzing, where it'll try to permutate, look for all those mangled representations of a domain name, and then check and verify if those DNS records exist, if that's a real website. They do have an online, super easy, just in the browser instance. If you go to dnstwist.it, I guess dnstwist.it, but say we were to enter a domain like youtube.com, and we were to try to scan for, hey, are there any weird, strange, permutations of that website. And where do they all come from? What's hosting them? What's available? And take a look. Obviously, there are a whole lot here. Oh, I could keep scrolling forever. There's stuff in Australia, there's stuff in the Netherlands, of course, the United States, Germany. It's also very cool to add in some homoglyphs, like maybe characters that look similar enough to the actual letter, but are not, and could be used in some phishing attack. And of course, maybe accidental extra letters, extra characters present in the domain. You've got some letter replacements. Here's utubs.com. Okay. Okay, that's an odd one. And TLD, when we change the top level domain, like rather than a .com, but if you went to a .net or a .org or any of these other options, that's pretty cool. If we look back in the GitHub readme, you can see that it lists out a lot of those cool, unique key features, but some that I think are super duper interesting, it can do some HTML similarity with like fuzzy hashing, trying to see if anyone maybe cloned a portion of your website, but then modified, manipulated so that it really could be a watering hole attack or credential harvesting, little scam there. And this is the coolest thing ever. It'll actually automatically take screenshots so you could go see what is on that page in mass across all the results that it finds. The readme documentation gets into a whole lot of this in their own quick start guide where you get an idea for the syntax if you're running it from the command line and an awesome section on phishing detection. That's digging into some of the stuff that I was just alluding to, fuzzy hashes, maybe comparing and contrasting the HTML code of one web page versus another, and the web page screenshot, being able to see that and really knowing what does it look like and having that hash for us as the analyst. And on top of that, it being Python, look, there is an awesome API. You can just import it and use it as part of your own code. And that is pretty slick. So in this video, I'd like to go through and run DNS Twist on some of the most common, most topical, the hottest, and the top domain names across the internet and just see what weird stuff is out there. I would, of course, really recommend you do the same if you're interested in your own organization, your own company, your own business, or just what you interact with all the time. But here's the thing. I'm behind my own home router and my own internet, and the internet service provider might be pretty smart and try to block or prevent me from accessing websites that are known to be malicious phishing websites. So what I'm going to do, while we might use a VPN or a proxy, I will create some digital ocean droplet out there on the open internet, and then I'll work with DNS twist from that. So the network traffic doesn't coming strictly from my machine, and I could still pull down the screenshot or get whatever I'd like without having to leave my fingerprints on it. Research. So I am inside of DigitalOcean, and I'm just gonna spin up a quick little droplet in a server close by, and I realized, look, hey, for this little experiment showcase and demo, it is gonna cost a little bit of money, but I'm totally okay with that. I think it'll be fun for the video. So I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine. I'll open up a terminal with Control-Alt-T, full screen with F11, and I'll go ahead and make a directory for DNS twist, and then I will go ahead and SSH just over into that DigitalOcean droplet that I just created. All right, now that I'm logged in, I'll see 
do I have pip? Nope, one of the Python package installations. I'd like to be able to go work with that, so let me apt install python3 pip. I am already running as root, so I won't need a sudo prefix in front of that. Let me go ahead and enter y for yes, and that should go and install everything that I need for at least getting pip up in action. While that's cruising through it, I do want to get back to the readme so I can copy paste the quick easy line to install it, but I did want to call out this section because I think it's worth, again, credit where credit is due. This is an awesome utility that is even in use in a whole lot of different products and services that are available on the market. Something in Splunk, Recorded Future, Rapid7 work here, Maltigo, even Threat Connect and the SZA crossfeed. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and install it. Let me go grab just that simple pip install and that should be all that we need. You could also just drag it into Ubuntu or Kelly. I believe it is in the repositories, but you know what? I think it's pretty cool to just grab it from either pip or git as we'd like. So I'll copy this pip install full command. Okay, pip has finished installing. So let me go ahead and pip install DNS twist full. Oh, they don't like me being outside of a virtual environment. That's fine. Can I just create one super duper quick? Do I have venv? I think so. No, I don't. Okay, we'll go ahead and install that just as well. That's fine. Okay, now that that is done, I should be able to mvenv. Env. Look at that. Love it. Now I can do environment bin activate. We'll dot source that so that it runs, gets me in that virtual environment. And now I can pip install DNS twist full for real this time. There we go. Pulling it all down. All right. Now that that is installed, I should just be able to run DNS twist from the command line and it is installed. And there we go. We can see all the help out put everything we might be able to pass for flags, switches, command line arguments and parameters, all the information here. Now, again, you could just be running this from your own host. You could use the browser implementation. You could do whatever you want here. I am just using it in DigitalOcean. So, hey, network connectivity isn't going to get in my way. Now, let's try that interesting idea of DNS twist on Facebook.com. Do we get any hits with that? We just pass it in as the domain, and then we'll let it do its work. We'll see how long this takes. Maybe 35. Okay, yeah, maybe the uh, <laughs> maybe the Internet of DigitalOcean isn't the best call. <laughs> okay, okay, we're, we're, we're cruising well our way back down. We're down to a minute or so. I'm fine with that. Look at how many it's finding. They're like 76. Oh yeah, almost 80 now. I believe you could put this in verbose mode so it'll just spit out everything that it finds as it's going through it. But honestly, we can wait till the end here. 100% scanned. All right. What all is going to be dumped onto my terminal in just a moment? I'll hit enter to speed this thing along. Okay. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Face <-bauk. laughs> I like these a lot. Facebook.com.com. Facebook. Nice. Faceboom.com. Oh, that's so funny. Facebook. Oh, geez. Even just the idea of this is honestly kind of fun to me. I'm not going to lie. Now, I'm curious, what do you think are the top domains or websites on the internet? What are the most commonly visited? And maybe, I don't know, we could probably Google that answer, find some Amazon, find Netflix, whatever. But I'm curious what your take is. Are there more websites that you tend to visit more often than others? Others. Or again, maybe you're worried about it for your own business, for your own company. Hey, could people, could end users accidentally go to something malicious rather than what they truly intended to with just a single accidental typo? Now, I don't want to beat this to death too much, but I do want to say that Flare has the capability to do this just as well. One of those really cool tools, again, trying to see what threat intelligence is out there. And we've talked about Flare quite a bit, but especially if you're worried about your digital footprint, the identity or information exposure out on the internet, even for your business or your company, it's worthwhile taking a look here. Oh, they even added the supply chain feature now. That is so cool. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. So look, I've just set up an identifier for my domain, johnhammond.llc, and with that, I could go track down maybe are there any lookalike domains out and about. If I go into the events section here, let me toggle this tenant selection to that domain, and then I'll change the category just as well to none of the usual, hey, dark web, illicit network, cybercrime, telegram groups and everything, but let's just see if there are any lookalike domains. I'll go ahead and hit apply. And oh, there is an oddball one on April 8th, 2023 from johnhammond.com. I don't know if this one is still active. There are a couple others. Oh, there's a wild card on that. Yeah. So we could dig into the history. It looks like it changed in some point. Uh, take it down if we really wanted to. That's a cool thing of Flare. Hey, request a takedown of something that shouldn't be out on the internet. Now I'm super curious though. What is on john-hammond.com? Can I go check john-hammond.com? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a real estate website. Great. I didn't know that I had that for 
competition too. Like I know the musician, right? You obviously, uh, there is a John Hammond that does like bluegrass music. Is that what it's called? Hey, you know, kudos, credit to him doing incredible stuff. And of course the Jurassic Park guy. I will never be able to overtake them in like internet SEO or the Google search results. And that John Hammond has the .com top level domain that I want. So, hey, anyway, let's get back to the fun stuff with DNS twist. And look, there are obviously a ton of results. We've scrolled through this even in the browser, but you get the IP address, you get the name server or any of the DNS entry records that are worthwhile. And there are a couple that don't even actually have any data sort of filled out there. In fact, if we get down to a couple more sections on the homoglyphs or other different representations of different letters, there are a good many that don't have any DNS records. So those probably just don't even exist as a real website, but could be a permutation of this site. If we wanted to tweak some of the results, if we actually were to run DNS twist one more time, remember we could see from all of those output, all of the sort of options or command line arguments, parameters and flags we might give it, we could change the username, we could actually supply one of the top level domains that we want, look up the Whois database, save screenshots. And this is what I really wanna dig into because it gets into some really cool stuff. But TAC R honestly is quick and easy, show only registered domain names. So that way we won't have any of those empty blank lines where there wasn't a whole lot there. It might be worthwhile if we're trying to see what is out there on the internet, we could just look for what's registered, what actually has something maybe there. And on top of that, hey, you could check for some banners if there is SMTP, like an email service, or of course the website HTTP. GeoIP, even better. Hey, try to take a look for where it might be located in the world. Okay, so what if I were to do the same thing that I had just done, DNS twist with TAC R now to only look for registered domains. Are there more on that johnhammond.llc if I'm looking for myself here? I'm curious. Okay, that's gonna take a little bit. Can I amp up the number of threads? I know that was another argument, tack T, right? What if we bring that to like 40 threads? Will it do it? Okay, it's cruising. Okay, I gotta be honest, I was gonna cave and just try it on my host, whatever internet provider blocking some sites. Uh, this is going significantly faster, so I am gonna let this play out and see how it comes back. Oh, it's done. Okay. It didn't find anything new, <laughs> just my own. Great, nothing else seemingly. It didn't even find the John hyphen Hammond. So, hey, Flair helped out for that one. All right, what are some of the top internet domains? No, I don't need the list of the top level domain. Thank you, GoDaddy, I don't need that. But Shopify, hey, yeah, the 10 most popular domains. This is a 2022. Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Baidu, Wikipedia, Xanax, Yahoo, WhatsApp. Hmm, we didn't even run on Google. We should do that. So let me make a directory for Google and and then let's try to get screenshots and take pictures of all of the fake typo squatting domains or lookalike domains for Google using DNS twist. So what I wanna do is use tack R for it to be registered. We can use all those threads again and let's use google.com. But what was the argument to screenshot? I think it's literally just, yeah, tack tack screenshots and then the directory. So let's do that. Let me supply tack tack screenshots. Expected one argument. Oh yeah, you need the actual directory. There we go. Okay, so let's try that. Will this work? What are you doing right now, DNS twist? Screenshots requires p hash. Okay, let's add that in just as well. Tac tac p hash caps lock. Thank you. P hash. Looking good. DNS twist, rendering that web page, google.com. Will that work? Ooh, so I am under the impression that you should have like the Chrome driver set up and installed, uh, at least something that will be able to go actually visit and view those sites. Okay, that's gonna take 49 minutes. Here I zoomed out and now it's going significantly faster. What's going on? Uh, odd, interesting. Let me go see, I'll open up another terminal. Can I see the results now? What do we have for our Google images? Oh, there are so many. <laughs> This is the fun stuff. What do we got? Fugle coming soon. We have Apache is functioning normally. Excellent, I like that. Huge domains, Google, two zeros, and then a one. Domains for sale for like $5,000. Hurry, one person has it in their cart. That's wild. Who's gonna buy Google with zeros and ones? <laughs> I do see a couple of these that don't have any pictures rendered or like a gray box. And I'm curious what that might be. Uh, Choto verifying your human. What else do we have here? Future home of something quite cool. That was one of the uh, GoDaddy default sites. AliExpress, nice. Error on genuine Google, ggoogle.com. They probably own that. 
I don't know what that one might be. Guyugle.com? I want to go see what that is. Okay, sexy, what the, C-Y-A-I. Thank you, AT&T. Yep, another one that didn't go through. That's genuinely going to YouTube. I'm curious now. This, okay, those got to be the real fishing ones. So let's take note of those. Google goes to City Search. Geo9, GLE, probably not registered. Forbidden on go-ogle. Google.com goes to a strange one that looks like Google, but I can't tell if it's real or not. All right, we got to like make a list of these. What are we looking at right now? Google.com? Extra O there. Fishing page, G-O-O-G-I-E.com. This is Google.com, has a couple popular categories. The owner of this is offering it for $30,000. W-Air, Woo-Air, where? What the heck is this? Google, that looks real, I think. Oh, fashion news, your daily fashion news. 12 fashion tips that will instantly make you look taller without wearing heels. Yo, I need that. You know how many people meet me in real life and then say, John, you're super short? Look, I know, it's because I'm not following my daily fashion news. Ooh, malware page blocked for your protection. What is this one? GoogleZero.com? Writing that one down. Mark Monitor with Google 5. Dan.com? Couple real ones, I think. Thank you, fishing page. Add it to the list. Goggler? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy, Michael, who's just looking for UFOs, apparently. I can't read that language. I don't know what that is. Ghoul.com. Ooh, look at this one. Security check. Do you currently have an antivirus installed? Yes or no? This website is designed to help users secure all the devices from cyber threats, viruses, and malware. That's gotta be fake. Goople, goop, gle.com. Let's write that one down. Looking good. Phishing, live game. <laughs> Oh, they're in on the they're in on the joke, huh? That's a Q and a number one. I want to go see all of these. Google, the best antivirus software 2024. AVG, yeah, is that so? Gpoogle.com. Uh, again, I think that is the real Google at this point. I think they just own those typo squatting domains. So to limit the blast radius of all of those potential scams, phishing, credential harvesting sites, stuff like that. What is this? Life is only one at hoogle.com. Clothing for a life of chance. That's odd. <laughs> Thank you, Cloudflare. Another fishing page at toogle.com. Now that we're getting into like the Unicode results, there are a lot of these that have the like XN hyphen hyphen like special character to look a lot like another character. And a lot of those could very well be phishing. Interesting that tried to take me to Twitter. <laughs> Success, the Unicode character GUI21.com whatever is working. Plesk, what is this? Page generated by Plesk. Is that like WordPress? Whoa. That's the name of the website, apparently. Another malware page. Google. What is this? How is this real on the internet for Google? Who made this? XN, I've, so a Unicode character, right? 9pbc.com. I have to go see if that's real. I have to go see this. <laughs> what? It's what is the source of this? Yeah. That's just it. It takes you to hof.fun. Okay. Now we know that was your daily dose of internet. <laughs> Are we back to Fugle? Did we loop? Yeah, okay, I think that is everything that DNS Twist has pulled thus far, and that's just Google. Okay, I look back at the DigitalOcean droplet, and it looks like that also only found JohnHammond.LC after running for however long it took. Uh, if we wanted to try to get screenshots from here, again, we know we would use TacTac screenshots, and we'd make a directory, uh, make directory for what, Amazon? We could do that. TacTac screenshots, Amazon, and we know that we need the p hash R arguments and let's go to amazon.com. Mm, but this will of course have some dependencies that it might need. So we'll need to install Python image library or pill. I think we can use pillow for that, right? Because pill won't return right away. Okay, how about now? Missing the Selenium web driver. So yes, we do need that just as well. I think we can pull that with pip, but we'll, we'll need our driver alongside it, correct? So I got to download Google Chrome and the Chrome driver. If you were to try to do this on something that didn't have that staged and set. Let's see, will that even work? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, session not created, Chrome failed to start. That's because you don't have Google Chrome. Can I install that super easily? Apt install Google Chrome stable. What? Can I just not install it through DigitalOcean? What if I just w get the Chrome driver down and then I try to unzip that? Oh, come on. Do I have 7Z? Are you kidding? All right, installed unzip. Now I can unzip Chrome driver. Let me just put my present working directory and the value of path for the path. So if I echo that. Yeah, now it just goes in the current directory. Uh, let's try to once again run our DNS twist. Fingers crossed. 
No, Chrome failed to start, exited abnormally. Do we have that file? We do. Okay, so that installed a Chrome driver, but it wouldn't want to run because there probably just is no GUI for this host, which makes complete sense. It's a digital ocean droplet. Okay, so that idea basically didn't work at all and that was stupid and I made a mistake, but we still got some fun ones on Google and I do want to go see if I can go reach those through some VPN or proxy, whatever. Okay, I am allegedly through a proxy now. So what does Goggle let me do? Yeah, I know oddities that, oh, stupid. Yep, yep, yep. I don't think there are any more bikes. Oh no, that one actually takes me right to it. A goal was probably fine. Yeah. What about Googie with a zero? Still pretty good. Redirects just fine to Google. Granted, it's taking a long time. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. No, no, weird stuff. We're in the weird stuff. Okay, pretty sure that is almost all not safe for work. So we got to redact a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, you can find weird stuff on the internet. Who knew? What about googlezero.com? Oh, that has expired. If you wanted to go to namebright.com, you could. Okay, how about Google N? Didn't that one say that was malware at some point? Or one of them did say that it was. Where am I? What about Goopkull? Goopkull, was that the one that had malware? No, nope, we're back at AliExpress. Okay, I mean, that basically counts as malware. What do we have here? This is the phishing live game. Oh shit, it downloads it immediately. <laughs> That has to be malware. They did like HTTP smuggling or however you want to call it, or like a drive-by download to just rapidly pull down this phishing game APK Android installer. Oh, we got to go see what that thing is at some point. What is on this page? Can I translate this page? It's trying to act like the real Google store. Look at this. It's trying to go straight to regular apps. Is this a joke? And let's, no, they have a homepage that just redirects to exactly that. If we go without any ID, nope, still takes me there. Does apps? <laughs> <laughs> what about store? Yeah, this has to just be totally staged for that. That's so wild. Can I Google translate that website? No, 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 you can, you can go. Allow that pop-up. Phishing live game, okay, I've downloaded so many of this APK. English, please. Phishing live game extensively contains advertising. One JT. That still hasn't came through. This app works on all your devices. Yeah, is that so? Does the install button even do it? It does. What does share do? Add to wish list. It just downloads it again. All of the images. I mean, I don't, am I wrong? Updated on the 23rd of April, 2024. That's not, that's the future. Let me look at these ratings and reviews here. Nope, that just forces a download. Tablet, all forced downloads. Wait a second, what? Yeah. <laughs> 82,000 reviews and yet you can only show me three. Why South says, hey, really amazing game. Alice says, I like the gem. Was this content useful to you? Download it. It downloads it when you... <laughs> See all reviews? Download it again. Flag is inappropriate. Ooh, that takes me to the real support on Google. That's hysterical. Do all of these URLs take me? Whoa, APK. Did you see that URL? Look at that. Where is this? Okay, share with family downloads it again. I've downloaded this 16 times now. Parents guide downloads it again. But all these other sites take you to some strange. <gasps> They all take you to the site. I should have had my browser tools open this whole time. What's going on on the network stuff? If I check out the refund policy, it gets it right from apkecmokedtj.com. And that's gotta be it, apkecmokedtj.com. That's that again. But if I were to go to slash apk, it, what is that? <laughs> okay, it's nothing. Is it random every time? Yeah, hello? Yeah access denied. Okay, that was a fun jolly jaunt through the fishing live game. <laughs> now that I've downloaded this like 20 times. <laughs> All right, where were we in the list? We were going to Toogle. Toogle.com brings me to a blank page. Is there nothing here? There's nothing here. Okay, that answers that. And now we can check out some of the Unicode ones. I think it'll allow me to still get that with the XN hyphen hyphen rendition. Yeah, Google.com brings me to www.google.com. Nothing there. How about this one? That one was strange, right? <laughs> Yeah, that one was strange. Oh shoot, we didn't get to go to Amazon and hey, that connection to SSH timed out. So I still wanna kind of do that again for Amazon. Like it, it's a it's a very weird kind of fun just seeing that all out there. Uh, how do you look for amazon.com? That's gotta be just as bad, if not worse. Oh yeah, I already found like 40 of them. 
Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Hey, this video is already getting kind of long, and I think we've gotten the point across. DNS Twist is super duper cool. You can find a whole lot of those typo squatting domains, lookalike domains, where threat actors, adversaries, scammers, or whatever might try to fish you or have some social engineering scam or credential harvesting through forms or just push down malware, APK files, EXEs, whatever. And I think it is worthwhile just to know what is out there. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got a chance to play with DNS Twist. Maybe you'll go on some fun safari rides just like this. And if you haven't, please do take a look at Flare. They are seriously cool and dig into a whole lot more telemetry and intelligence and knowing your exposed attack surface across the cybersecurity landscape. So that's an awesome thing, especially for your business organization or company. Link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you did. And that's the, that's, that's the outro. That's the end of the video. <laughs> See you later.